2025 quarterback commit Kevin Sperry is joining the show. We're going to talk to him about his recruitment, what it meant to get that offer from Oklahoma, and what led to his commitment on today's episode of Locked on Sooners. You are Locked on Sooners, your daily podcast on the Oklahoma Sooners, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Sooner Nation? Welcome to Locked On Sooners. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. FanDuel Sportsbook, the official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit fanduel.com slash locked on today to get started. Thank you for joining us. My name is John Williams. You can follow me on Twitter at John9Williams. My buddy here is Josh Helmer. You can follow him on Twitter at Josh on Ref. And Josh, we're going to have our conversation with Kevin Sperry coming up. And joining us now on Locked On Sooners is Oklahoma's most recent commit, Part of the 2025 recruiting class, Kevin Sperry out of Rock Hill. Kevin, how you doing, my friend? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Well, yeah, we're excited to have you on the show. You know, your recruitment was one that went really quick once the offer came down, but Oklahoma's been on your radar for quite some time. So kind of just walk us through that. You know, once you received the offer, it didn't take long for the crystal balls to start coming in, the predictions Mm -hmm. from you know rivals and 247 sports and on three. So what was it about Oklahoma that really led you to be so confident in your decision? I think it's the culture that Coach Venom has created. And uh, me and Coach Levy have a great relationship, too. And I feel like his offense fits my playing style very well. Uh, and I know Jackson Arnold, too. He, he, we have similar playing styles. Uh, and we've trained together, too. So, you know, we have a great relationship. Me, Jackson, Coach Levy, and then uh, – I'm still building a relationship with Coach Vanderbilt. I've talked to him, I think, three times since I committed. Um, but it just felt right, and just God just spoke to me. Uh, and my family, too. They felt like it was the right decision. So I said, why not? So dating back to, I guess it would have been the summer a year ago, the summer of 2022, when you camped with Oklahoma, what were some of just the initial impressions you had of of being at OU? I mean, what stood out to you from that initial camp experience? I think me and Coach Levy clicked right away. Um, you know, when he was coaching me on the field, I just felt very comfortable, which is not something that I felt at other camps. Um, I felt like me and him just clicked right away. And, you know, what he was teaching me, I, I was doing uh, just like he told me to. And uh, my dad noticed something, too. And he, my dad actually teared up watching him coach me because he noticed how free I was. Um, so, yeah, Coach Levy, me and him just clicked right away. And, uh I'm excited for the I'm excited for the future. Well, it matters. It matters to have somebody that you you feel like you can communicate with, especially if they're an offensive coordinator. Like communication is so key for you, right? No, it is. Yes, sir. Especially the OC. You need to be able to communicate with him. And uh, you know, my OC at Rock Hill, we we talk all the time. And if I don't like something, if I don't like a read, you know, he's willing to change it up. Sometimes, you know, we have to keep it in the playbook for that week, um, for that certain defense that we're playing, but Communication is key for those seeing the quarterback for sure. And so that must have felt great to just be able to like initially feel really, really comfortable with mm-hmm. with Jeff Levy in particular, but then to know like, okay, he's going to be my offensive coordinator. I get that offer that comes down. Yeah. And yeah, it, it is it freeing to just have that kind of decision out of the way? It is. And, uh, you know, right, right when I told him, it's like just, I just felt super free and, uh, I just felt like all, all the stress had just left me of the recruiting cycle and everything. And uh, now I don't really like the whole recruiting and going on visits anyways. Uh, so, you know, when it, when I got this offer, it was, it was something special, especially because he only offered two quarterbacks in my class, uh, which you have to respect. Uh, and I know I, I was the I was the top guy in there in my top school. So it was perfect. Kevin Sperry hanging out with us. 2025 quarterback commit out of Rock Hill hanging out with us on Locked On Sooners. The sole mission. I read a a quote from you out there that uh, was making the rounds that sole mission was impressive to you. Just the way that they treated you as a priority when uh, when you first camped at Oklahoma. Can you take us back to what those conversations were like and why that mattered to you? 
So I had just left Coach Levy's office. We met and talked for a little bit. And then uh, I was walking out. I think it was it was after – or it was before, before the spring game. Um, and uh, they stopped me in the hallway. I, I don't remember the names. I still have to – you know, good. I'm gonna be there Thursday, so I'm gonna be able to talk to them. Um, but yeah, they stopped talking to me for like a good 15 minutes, just about my future, and you know, they gave me a lot of advice for leadership and leading my team, especially as a quarterback. You gotta be able to be vocal and um, lead by example as well. Um, so just just that genuine, just that genuine uh, support that they gave me was it was it was amazing, and my my parents loved it as well. Um, so yeah, it was it was something that I remember for sure. And and I think that's been a mission of Brent Venables is to make sure that his players aren't just developed as players, but as people. And the sole mission is kind of a big part of that. So is that something that you kind of felt like, okay, not only am I building a great relationship with the coaching staff, with you know, my offensive coordinator or potential offensive coordinator at the time, but I'm already starting to build relationships with guys that are going to be invested, not just in my playing career, but just my future in general. Yeah. No, it was, it was great to see it put into action. You know, I know coach Venables has great character. I know he, he uh, puts guys of character in his program. Um, but it was, it was great to see that get put into action, especially because I was, I, I didn't really have any offers. I don't think maybe just a few, um, but they saw me walking with coach Levy and they, they, uh, they told me they knew I was a dog because I was watching with, walking with Coach Levy, which is funny. But, uh, yeah, it was, it was great to share that moment with them. So your parents, uh, tell us tell us a little bit about what what uh, your parents mean to you and uh, obviously uh, the decision-making process. I think uh, I read the quote, too. You know, you said it was important that your parents felt comfortable with the decision as well. So just what do mom and dad mean to you? And uh, what was their reaction when you told them, hey, you know, Oklahoma's the spot. I want to commit here. Yeah. Uh, my parents mean so much to me. You know, my end goal is to retire my mom, uh, whether that's through football or not. You know, that's that's my end goal in life because she works so hard for me. Um, you know, she wakes up at five, and five in the morning, gets back home at like seven. Um, but uh, you know, that's, my, that's my end goal in life. My dad works very hard, too. He's been training me and my brother since we about seven years old. And, uh, you know, I just – I respect them so much and I love them so much. Um, but the decision was made, I would say, leaving leaving Austin because we had, we had just finished a visit at UT um, and then we had a three-hour car drive back home. And uh, so me and my dad – that's who we went to UT, just me and my dad. We talked about it for pretty much the whole the whole drive. And, uh, you know, we just felt like it was the right decision and we found it – we found no reason to, to wait. And, um, uh, no, it was, it was, very, it was something very special. My mom cried for about two hours nonstop, <laughs> but no, it was, it was a very special moment for me and my family. And so as you kind of look ahead, you've got that decision off your plate. You're just finishing out your high school career. Now you've got two more years until you know, national signing day. So as you work this off season, What's something that you're kind of working on right now? We've we've seen a lot of bit a lot of your game. You bring a lot of athleticism. You're able to make a lot of throws from a lot of different angles and you know running both directions. What's something you're kind of focusing on at the moment? I would say staying in the pocket uh, was the main thing. I feel like I escaped the pocket a little too much too early last year. And also when I do escape the pocket, I escape to throw first and not to run. Um, you know, obviously I can't run, but being a quarterback, you got to be able to spread the ball down the field, even when you're off platform. So I say those are the two main things. Yeah, you're kind of underselling it, man. You can't just run. You're like a really, really good running quarterback. Thank you. <laughs> now, I played, I played running back, and uh, pretty much my whole life, I played running back and linebacker. Then I made the transition to quarterback in eighth grade. That was that was my first year playing quarterback. How does that experience having played linebacker kind of help? Um, just inform playing mm -hmm. quarterback? Uh, my dad played middle linebacker until he went to Washington State. Um, so that, that was the main reason. And my dad didn't really want to pay for all the quarterback training because <laughs> how expensive it was. That was that was the main reason. Um, but I love being able to touch the ball every play at running back. 
because we, we didn't really pass the ball at a young age. Um, but once we started passing the ball, I realized that I could I could still run the ball as a quarterback too. Um, so you now it worked out perfectly. And uh, I think having a linebacker, and my dad's a linebacker, so you know he taught me a lot about defenses too at a young age, and he was very hard on me and making sure that I know um, just different gap schemes and defensive coverages and everything like that. So I think I think it's helped a lot with the position of quarterback. Kevin Sperry, 2025 OU commit, quarterback from down around Frisco, hanging out with us. We've uh, flipped on the huddle tape, and as John said, I mean, we love what we've seen. Uh, again, very uh, very kind of general breakdown for us uh, watching football tape, but for a couple of guys that watch a lot of football and maybe aren't coaches or whatever, we love the big arm. We love the ability to run the football. But for folks that maybe haven't come out and watched you in person or haven't flipped on the huddle tape, what kind of quarterback are you, Kevin? What what do you bring to the table for Oklahoma? Um, I would say a very smart quarterback. Um, you know, I make very good decisions. I'm very uh, safe with the ball. Um, but you know, I'm a dual threat. I'm a dual threat guy. That uh, you know, let's just celebrate celebrate with their teammates when they score. And uh, you know, I'm, a, I'm just a selfless, selfless teammate. Um, you know, I make sure everyone's everyone's raising the standard every single day in the program uh, and I'm a lead through my actions. I'm a lead vocally too. And uh, yeah, I, 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 love, I love to win football games. So, <laughs> what, was, what was kind of one of the most challenging things that you faced your sophomore year? Um, I'm not sure. Probably just, just losing games. I really just hate losing. Um, but now I can't really think of something specific that uh, was tough. I was dealing with an Achilles issue, I guess, in uh, both both my Achilles, I think mid season, but that was really the main the main adversity I faced. Yeah, it, it's tough, and it's tough to play through that kind of a pain if you know if you haven't rolled your ankles or had you know Achilles problems, and you're an athletic quarterback like yourself. That that kind of impacts everything you want to do, even if you're just you know, the Peyton Manning style of quarterback and you stand in the pocket, you don't run. Having an Achilles problem is a big part is a big problem. Yeah, not for sure. I think it, I think it kind of helped me stay in the pocket too. Uh, something that I wanted to do because uh, I couldn't move as I couldn't move as well. Uh, but now once I got that, once I got that fixed, I've been improving every single day I and mean, watching, watching my tape still, uh, I find it a little cringy just because I've improved so much. And I know what I'm going to do next year. And uh, that's going to be very fun next season. Well, Kevin, I think one of the things that, you know, jumps out with a commitment this early is clearly you've, you've found the place you, you want to be at in Oklahoma. There's someone that you've talked a little bit about Jackson Arnold, that fans are very excited about it. OU. maybe there's another quarterback or two that gets added to uh, Oklahoma's classes. Maybe not uh, between now and then, but, one thing that, again, I think jumps out is clearly you're not afraid of competition either. So what what do you think about that? Because a place like OU, there will be competition for a quarterback job. And I know we're a long ways between now and then. But just generally speaking, what's your thought process on a quarterback competition in Norman when that day comes? I don't think there's anything else to say besides I don't really care about who who is who is in front of me. Uh, in the classes before me, I, I don't care at all. And um, you know, I respect them. You know, I got I got to respect everyone, but I, I truly just don't care who who decides to come in before in the class in front of me. And I'm really I'm willing to compete it out. So yeah, and and speaking of Jackson Arnold, you got to see him, you know, up close and personal. You've you've seen you said you trained with him some as well. Mm-hmm. Just give us a little bit of your thoughts on him as a player. What's he like as a quarterback? What's he like as a person and uh, what you've seen on and off the field? No, he's a, he's a great person. I love hanging around with him. Um, Past the midway point of the NBA season and the NHL season, now's the perfect time to download FanDuel America's number one sports book because new customers – 
you get a no sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe. It's secure. It's super easy to use. You can bet on everything from the money line to point scores, threes drained, you name it, and more. FanDuel, they even let you combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with a same-game parlay. So don't miss the chance to get your no sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to FanDuel.com backslash locked on that's fanduel.com backslash locked on to learn more make every moment more with fanduel an official sports betting partner of the nba no but he's a he's a great person he's a great he's a great competitor too um but uh now nah, he's a dog and i love i love being able to work out with him too because he pushes me and i push him i feel like too so uh now we, we have a great relationship and uh you know i get down there i'm gonna i'm gonna help him out he's gonna help me out too <laughs> Well, you will be, my friend, Kevin, one of the popular names in the 2025 class when uh, when you all sign with Oklahoma because you you are the first on board in the 2025 class. So what do you know, just generally speaking, about the University of Oklahoma? I mean, obviously, you've, you've visited here and you've talked a little bit about Jeff Levy, but what do you know about Sooner football tradition? Because I'm going to tell you, it's a rabid fan base, and I think you're going to be one of their favorites. Mm-hmm. All right. I know that they've won a lot of Heisman's, and I know the fan base is crazy. Um, and they, they deserve they deserve to, you know, win national championships. They deserve that, and I think moving into the SEC, that's going to help with that a lot too. Um, man, they de- they deserve the world. They're they're so uh, supportive. Um, you know, even my in my offer post and my commitment post, they're they're going crazy, and I love that. And my family love that too. Um, and I just want to make sure that they know that I'm 100% locked in, and. Uh, with OU and I'm excited to be able to be able to play for them one day. I also wanted to ask you about your training up at uh, C4 um, and, you know, Southeast Oklahoma, Texarkana area or Texahoma area. I should say Um, you, you drive a long way to get there to, to train with those guys. So what is it about what they're doing there that drew you to, to start training and working out with those guys? Well, my dad, my dad found coach Coop, um Sean Cooper on social media and he noticed how you know how good the training was and what they were doing is specific for uh, the position type and um you know we built a relationship with coach Coop uh, he's a great person he, he brings that energy every single day and uh the people in the program love him I tr- truly love him every single day they're they're willing to compete and uh um you know he he's a he has great energy and uh he's very supportive and he uh he has a lot of connections too, and so uh, yeah, that helps. And that helps me out a lot too, with uh, the recruiting stage. And he has a lot of people that have come through the program. I'm Gandhi one, um, so he's he's been giving me a lot of advice. And and there are a lot of guys there that are Oklahoma targets. Is there and and just prospects that are being recruited across the country. You mentioned a lot of D1, you know, programs. We got Mel Tucker up at Michigan State trying to invade Oklahoma and take everybody's best prospects. So, right. is there a guy there that's really stood out to you as you train and you just watch different guys train? It could be an Oklahoma target, it could be anybody, but just somebody that you're like, "Man, that dude, he's a dog. I want to work out with him." That's a guy that that just gets after it. I would say uh Dede. Dede uh Sims. I forgot his first name. We call him Dede. Zadavian. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but man, he he shows up every day. He's a, he's a dog. I love being around him too. He's a great person, and uh, he has a, he has a great energy. Uh, but uh, I would say Amari and Porter too. He's a receiver. He's in the twenty six class, but uh, he's been showing up for us every single seven on seven tournament. So I think those are the top two guys right there. What's the sales pitch from Kevin Sperry? You're, you're talking to somebody that's in the 24, 25, 26 class, and you're saying, hey, this is why you need to come to Oklahoma. W- what's, what's your sales pitch? What are you telling them about why Oklahoma is the place? Uh, first of all, I want to tell them that we're going we're gonna to win some football games. And uh, I, co- I trust Coach Venables. Um, you know, I think that's very important things that uh, the trust with the head coach. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm excited to see what Oklahoma does next year too and uh i'm still i'm still kind of new to this whole recruiting thing but i'm recruiting the 24 and 25 class i just want OE to be the best you know i don't really care you know if they're in my class or not i just want OE to be the best and like i said the fans deserve it 
if there was a guy on your team at Rock Hill that you think is not being recruited heavily enough, who'd be that guy? Jonah Bowman or Ben Rosa? Those are, ben Rosa is a left tackle, and Jonah, he is a middle linebacker. He plays, he's playing some tight end this year too. But they uh, they work very hard. Jonah actually goes to C4 with me on a – I think he goes three times a week. I go twice because uh, I do some other stuff at home with uh, training. But they've been working very hard. And uh, I have to shout out my boy Victor Chi and Noma too. He's a, he's a running back. He goes to C4 as well. So I got Victor Bolsher, Victor Chi and Numa, Jonah Bowman. They all go to C4 with me because uh, they love it just like I do. But those guys, they've all been working very hard. I would imagine, and I know, Kevin, you shared a little bit about what your parents mean to you with us. But if I could just ask one more question about your dad, someone that – has has played college football, understands a little bit. Uh, maybe recruiting's changed a little bit, but he gets college football. He's been around. He, he's been a part, as you mentioned, of uh, your training growing up. So just dad specifically, how much has dad meant to you as uh, you've gone on your football career so far? Now he means a lot to me. Uh, he's very hard on me, which I uh, you know, respect because he just wants me to be the best. Uh, you know, even sometimes I might, I might get mad, but – now he, he continues to push me, um, and I love him so much because of that. Um, now I just want to I just want to prove him right. Now I just want to make my family proud. Um, so man, that's that's really it. And you said your little brother plays too. What what position does he play? He plays quarterback. He'll be a freshman next year. Okay, all right. So you got a spare quarterback room over there at Rock Hill. Um, and what what kind of a quarterback is he? Is he also a pretty athletic guy that moves around well, or is he a pocket passer that just sits back there and, and slings it. No, he, he can move too. Uh, he should he should be tall. He, he's getting some grown pains right now, so I think he'd be taller than me when it's all said and done. I was just kind of scared. He's probably going to beat me up. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, no, he, he's, he works very hard. I think that he is more talented than me when I was his age, for sure, uh, especially with the arm angles that he has. He, he's got crazy arm angles that he can do. Uh, but he, he works out with me. He goes to C4 with me too. Um, but he's, he's working very hard. Kevin, how can uh, how can fans keep up with you? I know you got social media pages and the like. And then I'm curious too. Uh, obviously, I mean you're busy at work every single day trying to get better at this thing. So, just what are the next couple of weeks and months uh, before obviously your junior season? What's sort of on the schedule these next couple of weeks and months for you? Um, I know I'm going to a rivals camp. Pretty sure it's going to be in Dallas. Um, Elite 11, that'll be in Dallas too. Uh, I'm going to go into OU Thursday, like I said. Uh, that's, that's really all the big events that I have really planned. It's a busy enough schedule for sure yeah. for, uh, for a quarterback on the recruiting trail. But, Kevin, hey, thanks so much for taking the time to, to join us here on Locked On Sooners. Y'all make sure you follow him on Twitter at Kevin Sperry, number nine. Number nine happens to be my favorite number, too. So I'm uh, pretty excited about that. So I'll have to get myself a Sperry nine jersey down the road. But, uh, Kevin, thanks so much, man. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. Yep. Y'all make sure you follow the show on Twitter at Locked On Sooners, on Facebook, Locked On Sooners Podcast. Subscribe on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. But until next time, we got Kevin Sperry, my man Josh Helmer. I'm John Williams. We'll talk to you then. Boomer. Sooner. There you go. <laughs>